Hey Pokemon Masters, but Keeper Toby here, and Pokemon Diamond version is where it's at. Traveling around the Sinnoh region, getting to the Spear Pillar, and taking on Dialga. Of course, you might have played the lesser Pokemon Pearl version, in which you take on Palkia instead of Dialga. I guess technically they're the same, but the only difference is the box art legends. Which one's the canon one? Both? Neither? Perhaps it's Pokemon Platinum. Pokemon Platinum features both Pokemon and as well as, of course, Giratina, a Pokemon from another dimension. The Distortion World is super cool. I hope they do it in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but if you've never played Pokemon Platinum, it's a real treat. Traveling around a parallel dimension or pocket universe in which you jump around and gravity's different and Giratina awaits for you at the end. If you've played the more recent Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it might remind you of the Ultra Spaces where the Ultra Beasts live. Live. In fact, it's gone around the community a lot. What if Giratina is an Ultra Beast? And what if Ultra Space works in the exact same way as the Distortion World? Except the thing is, Ultra Space is a little bit different. Regular Pokemon live out in the Ultra Wilds. You travel there by way of an Ultra Warp Ride, which travels in light years distance. And on top of all this, humans live in these Ultra Spaces, and Guzzlord lives in a world that looks a lot like a destroyed version of Alola. These are true parallel universes. Except, I thought that Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum were parallel universes to each other. So are they to each other Ultra Space? That doesn't make any sense. On top of that, in Pokemon Sun and Moon's post game, you can jump through a portal that will take you to, you guessed it, another Alola, another parallel world. When you travel through that portal, day changes to night, which implies that you might be traveling from sun version to moon version, except the version exclusive Pokemon stay the same. So are you really jumping from sun to moon or from sun to sun at a different point in time? What is going on? Parallel universes are confusing, but it might fit into the idea that there are multiple multiverses. In fact, four different kinds of multiverse and Pokemon fits into them all. Let's take a look. So yes, the Pokemon multiverse is a mess. A mess, I tell you. The Pokemon world isn't so much one planet where all of the games and the TV show take place, but rather a series of different universes all telling similar stories. There's Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, Leaf Green, Fire Red, uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are happening. They're similar events, but on a different timeline. Ash is a parallel version of Red, but which version of Red? Are we talking about the Red from Pokemon Origins or the Red from the games? The Red from Leaf Green, Fire Red? I, I don't know. On top of that, as I've mentioned, you've got your parallel dimensions, the distortion world, ultra space. Let's break it down. What's going on here? After some late night scrolling on YouTube, I ended up watching a video by a channel called 60 Symbols, and they broke down the multiverse as we may be experiencing it right now in the real world into four different categories. And so it was super useful. And thank you to them for sharing this. There are four types of multiverse. And as I was watching their video explaining it, I was thinking about the Pokemon world and how perfectly all of the different dimensions fit into this model. But before we get to a multiverse, we have to establish what is a universe. It might seem like a silly question, but seriously think about it for a moment. The universe for you is everything you're observing and experiencing right now. It's you watching this video, considering clicking the like button or heading down to the description to check out my merch store, or perhaps it's you thinking about that shiny hunt that you haven't yet finished, even though you promised you were gonna do it this time, you were gonna get a shiny, but uh, and it's just sitting on your desk and you've just taken note of it. That is the universe as you experience it. The universe is everything that you can possibly experience experience, see, touch, and feel, and the furthest we can see is what we know as the observable universe. What is the observable universe? And I use the term observable universe. This is because for us, we can look up to the night sky and we can see stars. And this light from the stars travels at light speed to our eyes. We can use telescopes to see pretty far, but we can also just use our eyes to look at the sun. But did you know when you look at the sun, you're actually seeing the light that the sun gave out eight minutes and 20 seconds ago. That's because that's how long it takes for the light to get from the sun to our eyes. And the further the out into the universe we look with our telescopes, the older the light is because it's further away. But on top of that, 
as far as we can see, the observable universe, the universe is expanding, and at its edges, the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light, or at the speed of light. This means the light that's traveling from those points, those furthest points, anything beyond that, that is called the particle horizon, and that is as far as we can see and we can observe. It doesn't matter how good the telescopes get, we will never be able to see beyond that point, because the light is moving away from us at the same speed as, or faster than, the speed that it takes for light to travel to us. That's it. That's our universe, the observable universe. And Pokemon has this too. They have their own version of the Big Bang with a swirling chaos void, an egg that became Arceus. Arceus creates Dialga and Palkia to govern and control time and space. And every version of the Pokemon reality has a version of this story. And whether or not the speed of light works the same in the world of Pokemon or the universe, the observable universe is as big, that we don't know much about. But we do know that there is ultimately an observable universe at the end of it, a particle horizon. And that is what a universe is. Anything else is a multiverse. And as I said before, we have four different types of multiverse. So we're going to start with a type one multiverse. This is the kind of simplest kind to understand. Type one, what is beyond the particle horizon? What is beyond what we can observe? The chances are, more universe, more space, more stars, more distribution, more stuff exists out there. To a very high degree of probability, that is the case. But as we will never be able to see or interact beyond the particle horizon, you can consider the space out there to be another universe or other universes. It's a special kind of space, and this is why I think the name Ultra Space works really perfectly for this kind of multiverse. This is because everything that happens beyond the particle horizon still has to abide by the same laws and physics as our universe. It's a multiverse, but there's still it's still based in space. Like I say, this is why I think Ultra Space is a really good name. And when we look to Ultra Space, we see that while well, yes, the environments are wild and the creatures are completely different, ultimately the physics work exactly the same. This explains why when you use an ultra warp ride to take a shortcut from our point in the universe to ultra space, you travel in light years. It's interesting to note that this is a very small amount of light years compared to the 93 billion light years across that we know we can see, but it's possible that the light years distance between the warp holes that the uh, game is referring to is the, the distance between the, like, the shortcut tunnel that you're taking through them when you're traveling through that Doctor Who time vortex type situation. Okay, but hang on, no Toby, I can hear you commenting already. In Ultra Spaces, there are legendary Pokemon, there are other regular Pokemon that exist out in the Ultra wilds. There are other humans that live in Kartana's world and in Ultra Megalopolis. And in fact, in Guzzle's world, there's a whole Alola that has been destroyed. How can that possibly be? Well, this is actually pretty founded in science as well. If the universe or universes, if all the space and stuff out there is infinite and goes on forever, and there is a finite amount of things that make up stuff in the universe, then there must be out there somewhere another you and me. Another me with this video and another you watching it. Maybe that one will click the like button or head down to the description to check out my merch store. <laughs> but the point stands and in the exact same way, out there somewhere else in the multiverse is another Alola that Guzzlord has destroyed. There are other humans and there are other creatures that are biologically identical to Pokemon. This also explains that situation in Sun and Moon, where in the post game, you go to create a new cosmog. Because this is in Sun and Moon and not Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it doesn't get talked about a lot, but in the post game of Sun and Moon, there is a portal at the altar of Sun or Moon. You travel through it and you go to another Alola, where instead of day, it's night. And through this portal, whoever you've got with you, Solgaleo or Lunala, the other one, the counterpart will appear and together they will create a new cosmog. And in my mind, this is how how ultra spaces are created. Because Solgaleo and Lunala are known as the male and female equivalents of each other, and on top of that, Cosmog's whole evolution line is about the creation of the universe. It's a swirling of nebulous gases that then become ultra dense when it evolves into Cosmoum. And then when it evolves, that energy bursts forth. What happens to all of that energy? What happens to all of that density? It creates a new ultra space for Cosmog to live in, and then when it evolves, to go and breed in and create 
more cosmog. However, like with all biology out there in the universe, necrozma is its natural predator, wanting to eat from the light it gives off, which is why necrozma and the other ultra beasts are attracted to ultra wormholes, because they know that on the other side might be the tasty, tasty meal that is a cosmog, or rather Solgaleo and Lunala. This is all happening not through parallel dimensions, but rather as a type one multiverse. Out there beyond the observable universe, there is more space, and that space is ultra space, and that is where these repeated patterns, that is where these repeated Alolas are happening. To kind of top this off, Guzzlord is the personification of that. A Pokemon that looks a lot like, but not identical to, Zygarde. Zygarde here in the Pokemon world that we live in on Earth is the protector of the Poke Earth, but for Guzzlord it has a slightly different role, but they look very similar with their multi appendages, the double head thing they have going on with one head being on their stomach and one being on their head, both of them being part dragon type and both of them residing when Guzzlord comes here, it's attracted to the cave that is identical to Zygarde's cave in Kalos. Blimey, that was a mouthful. <laughs> All of this is to say that that is, in regards to Pokemon, a type one multiverse. The laws of physics are pretty much the same. There are repeated patterns out there and it's all happening in ultra space. So what about a type two multiverse? And this is where the idea of the distortion world comes into it. We're looking at pocket dimensions. If you think of the type one multiverse as a bubble that is constantly expanding with us living on the surface and ultra space happening on the sides completely far away. And then the ultra warp ride is like tunnels that go through that bubble. Then the type two multiverse pocket dimensions are happening as like little soap sud bubbles on top of the bubble. Does that make sense? Within the Pokemon universe, we have a few different examples of this. We've got the distortion world, obviously. We've got the, the ghost dimension. We've also got the dream world, although the dream world might be accessed by way of a, a kind of psychic state where your mind goes there. This dimension is a pocket dimension that exists as part of kind of our universe. In fact, the existence of realms like the distortion world that were created at the beginning alongside Arceus may be fundamental to the functioning of our universe. It may be that we need the distortion world as a counterbalance for our universe to exist. And so that's how these dimension worlds exist. And the cool things about these dimensions are that the rules of physics are completely different. This is why in the distortion world, gravity is all over the place and just the whole realm operates differently. In that sense, there is no way that Giratina is an ultra beast. It exists completely separately to them in a completely different kind of dimension. But now we're going to go to a type three multiverse and talk about the one you're probably the most familiar with, the many worlds theory or the many worlds interpretation. Let's take this Pokeball and we're going to put my friend Clefable in the Pokeball. Nice. Except when I close it, there's a mechanism in there that has a 50% chance of going off that might kill the Clefable. Don't know why I said it like that. The Clefable. The question is, what is now happening inside the Pokeball? Is it a Pokeball with a dead Clefable or a Pokeball with an alive Clefable? Or is it both? The both possibilities, both realities exist in parallel dimensions until I open the Pokeball and work out that we live in the dimension. Ah. Where? No. Sad. Oh, poor Clefable. This applies to Pokemon hugely because Pokemon is a game about choices. It's a role-playing game. So in Pokemon Red version, when you choose Squirtle and I choose Bulbasaur and someone else chooses Charmander, we're living out that many worlds interpretation on different cartridges. And actually restarting the cartridge might be a new, a new universe being born elsewhere with the other universe dying and disappearing. When you go left out of Oak's Lab and I go right, you choose Cat I choose Weedle, you get the Helix Fossil, I get the Dome Fossil. These are the many worlds playing out. This is a Type 3 universe. Now, you might be wondering, Toby, what about Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Leaf Green and Pokemon Fire Red and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee? Is that not the many worlds interpretation with these events happening on slightly different timelines? Universes where Mega Evolution exists and the ultimate weapon went off and universes where it didn't go off and they don't exist. What's going on? And it's, it's hard to say whether that's a type three multiverse or whether that's a type four multiverse. And this is the biggest and broadest kind of multiverse that exists. This this is the 
if it's mathematically possible, then it exists out there somewhere, multiverse. See, with the type three multiverse, they're all sort of stacked on top of each other in a big line with different decisions branching off into different universes and time travel movies play with this all the time. But with the type four multiverse, the only movie that I can really think that really makes use of this is actually Into the Spider-Verse. Awesome movie in which Spider-Noir lives in black and white and is very confused by a Rubik's Cube that has all of these colors on them. The fact that he can even perceive them is kind of wild. And you've got Spider-Ham, who lives as a cartoon, again, in a different style of animation. They live in different universes. This is kind of like Deadpool, realizing that he lives inside a movie and is played by, um, Detective Pikachu. Ryan Reynolds, thank you. Sweet mother of ours. The point is these different Pokemon versions, Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, they may all be a type four multiverse, not type three, given that they run on different engines, have different mechanics, have different version exclusives, programmed into them. Just consider this, in Pokemon Gold and Silver's Kanto, there's a day-night cycle, but in regular Red, Blue and Yellow, there is no day-night cycle. Now, we assume as players, oh yeah, but day and night surely exist in the Kanto region. It's just they didn't have the mechanic then, but for the people that live in the Kanto region in Red, Blue and Yellow, they don't experience night. Not in the same way that they do in Gold, Silver, and Crystals post-game. On top of that, you have characters in the world of Pokemon that recognize that they live in a video game, either by giving you instructions on how the game works, access to menus, that kind of thing, or by the very fact that they work at the Game Freak offices that exist within the game. We actually see this integrated into the lore of Pokemon games when, in the Sinjo Ruin events, Arceus tries to create another Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, and we get flashes is images of a world that is not the world of the game, but is rather our world. And this extends, this type four multiverse extends to the games and the manga, the story that exists within the world of the trading cards or the Detective Pikachu movie, again, with Ryan Reynolds. Except in those universes, the credits are like a real thing that happens at the end of the movie. The code of the game is a real thing that exists within the worlds of the games. The Pokemon that live within the TCG world live as TCG art. It's hard to wrap your head around with that one, but the point of it is, is that all of these Pokemon multiverses, this is a type four multiverse. So to recap, Type one multiverse. It's what's beyond the observable universe, beyond the particle horizon. Out there is more space, and I call that ultra space, where repeating patterns happen. Other regions that look like the ones that we observe, creatures that are like Pokemon, and some that actually are Pokemon, as well as humans live out there. Multiverse type two are pocket dimensions that exist as a part of this universe. The dream world, the ghost dimension, the, the uh, distortion world. In fact, their existence may help with the functioning of this universe. The type three multiverse is the many worlds interpretation, the one in which, you know, you started with Charmander, I started with Bulbasaur, or perhaps where you did hit the like button instead of didn't this time. And of course, checked out the merch store, links in the description. And then the type four multiverse is, if it mathematically is possible, if it can be written in code or script, then it exists in the Pokemon cards or the anime or the, the video games. With perhaps some iterations of video games existing within type three or type four, I don't know. Perhaps it's the case that the relationship of Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow is that of a type three universe, but the relationship of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee to Red, Blue and Yellow is that of a type for multiverse. It's that kind of difference. I don't know. A bit confused about that one. You have to let me know your thoughts, of course, in the comments down below. Thank you for putting up with my very sweaty forehead. It's very hot in here today. Thank you all for all your support and love. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit rambly. And of course, so hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. A huge thank you to those of you who have been supporting this channel financially, whether that's through buying my merch, my Tree of Life poster, or those of you supporting me on Patreon, including the big patrons of this month, JD Gottlich, Michael Hornshoe, and Matty Barr. Thank you.